Hi, today we're going to be going over P1 of IMO 2017. This problem asks that if we have an integer a0 greater than 1, and we define a sequence as so, an plus 1 is equal to the square root of an if the square root of an is an integer, or in other words, if an is a square, or an plus 3 if an is not a square. So an example would be if I had a0 equals 2, it's not a square, so I add 3, I get 5. This is not a square, so I add 3 again and I get 8. Not a square, add 3. Not a square, add 3, and so on. So the problem now asks that what values of a0 are there for which there is a number a such that a n equals a for infinitely many values of n? Essentially, for what initial value will the sequence eventually become periodic and start cycling? Now, with problems like these, it's always good to get a feel for the problem and try out some numbers, and 3 being here is no coincidence. So with that hint, if you want to pause the video and give the problem a try, do so now. Now that I hope you've given the problem a try, what we're going to do is just try out some cases. We did try out 2, it seems to keep on increasing. If we try out 3, it's not a square, so I add 3, I get 6. It's not a square, so I add 3, I get 9. But 9 is a square. Taking the square root of it, that's 3. And hey, it cycles back. So a0 equals 3, that's one solution. Let's try out a0 equals 4. It's, not, it's a square, so that's going to give me 2. But that goes back to this now. It's going to keep increasing, or so it seems. If we do try a0 equals 5, well, that's just going on from here, which we have tried before. a0 equals 6 is just going on from here, which we know does repeat. So, hey, actually, if this repeats, all the members in this cycle repeat as well. So a0 equals 3, 6, or 9 are actually answers as well. If we try a0 equals 7, let's try that. We've not gone over that before. It's not a square, so that would be 10 not a square, 13, 16, and then I go to 4, which we have gone through here. And this seems to keep on going forever. If we try a0 equals 8, that's actually this as well. a0 equals 9, we've gone over before, and it does repeat. If we go for a0 equals 10, well, that's here, and that seems to be going on forever a0 equals 11, this one we've gone over before as well. a0 equals 12, this is going to be interesting. We get 15, we get 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, 33, 36, and it goes to 6. And then, obviously, we know that it does repeat because of this. So, all the members in this cycle are also appropriate values of a0 and one thing that we're noticing now is that the values that we've gotten let's just let's just go over which does work uh 2 5 8 11 14 well this doesn't seem to work 3 6 9 it does seem to work 4 doesn't seem to work 5 doesn't seem to work 6 is working 7 doesn't seem to work, 8 doesn't seem to work, 11 doesn't seem to work, 9 is working, 10 doesn't seem to work, but you see that 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, all of these numbers, they do seem to work, and it, it seems like it's natural to conjecture that only numbers that are multiples of 3, only those numbers work, and uh, to try to prove that now, maybe that maybe that's a direction that we should go for. One thing to note is that this sequence again the one where we started with two it seems to just never hit a square and that's quite weird perhaps we can prove that but for now let's try to prove that a0 must be a multiple of three one thing to note is that even when i took the square root of this number the next number i got in the sequence was a multiple of three Let's just try to see squares uh, modulo 3 and try to observe something about that. Well, we know that 3n squared is uh, congruent to 0 mod 3 because we have 9n squared. 
we know that 3n plus 1 squared, numbers that are congruent to 1 mod 3, when they're squared, they will become, uh, that's 9n squared plus 6n plus 1, that's congruent to 1 mod 3. Numbers that are 2 mod 3, 3n plus 2, when they're squared, I'm going to get 9n squared plus 6 plus 12n plus 4, which is again congruent to 1 modulo 3. One thing to note is that there's no 2 modulo 3 here, so numbers of the form 3n plus 2, they'll never be a square because, well, the squares modulo 3 must be 0 or 1. And hey, that seems to explain what's happening here too. That's 2 modulo 3. Uh, and I add a 3, again, it stays 2 modulo 3. I add a 3, it stays 2 modulo 3. And I keep adding the 3 and I never hit a square. So I never have to square root and I just keep adding 3s. So the sequence is going to keep increasing. And that is that is the first step to our problem now. We have a lemma. We have a nice lemma that states that if a0 is congruent to 2 mod 3, then the sequence is unbounded or forever increasing. So it does not fit our criteria. It will never become periodic. So that's one interesting thing that we just learned. Another thing to notice is that if I do have a number that's 1 mod 3, let's just take a, a number that's 1 mod 3, and I try to square root it, it can result in a number that's 2 mod 3 or in a number that's 1 mod 3. But if I have a number that's 0 mod 3 and I square root it, of course, if, the, if these numbers are square numbers, I'm only going to get a number that's, again, 0 mod 3. So that gives us uh, one interesting thing. That is that if n is congruent to 0 mod 3, that double implies, implies in both directions that n squared is congruent to 0 mod 3. So if, if I have a number n squared that's a multiple of 3, its square root is also going to be a multiple of 3. If I have a number that is a multiple of 3, its square is also going to be a multiple of 3. Note that this does not hold for 1 mod 3 and 2 mod 3 because if I do have a number that's 1 mod 3, it could either end up as 2 mod 3 or 1 mod 3. So well, if it does end up as 2 mod 3, we know that it's going to become unbounded. So perhaps that's our hint for numbers that are 1 mod 3, such as 4 and 7. Perhaps we can prove that we're always going to end up at a number that's 1 mod 3. And even if we started the sequence of 25, I'm going to go to 5, which, notice this, 25 was 1 mod 3. I square rooted it. I got 5, which is 2 mod 3. And now... Well, this is going to just keep growing forever because of our lemma. So perhaps we can we do get a nice direction to prove that. Perhaps we should try to prove that numbers that are 1 mod 3, a0 that is 1 mod 3, perhaps we should try to prove that if a0 is 1 mod 3, then eventually I'm going to reach a number that's 2 mod 3. And perhaps I can prove that if a0 is 0 mod 3, I eventually always cycle back to maybe 6 or something else. It does seem like I'll always cycle back to 6. Let's let's try another let's just try another multiple of 3. Let's try 39. Well, I know there's no multiples of 3. Well, there's 3 squared which was 9. There's 6 squared which was 36. The next multiple of 3 squared is 81. So eventually going off of on off, I get to 78, I get to 81. And then I go to 9. And that does actually repeat. That goes to 6, 3, 9. So it does seem like always, no matter what the case is, I go to 3, 6, 9. Let's just try another one for sanity's sake. If I do eventually hit, if I pick a number bigger than 81, I'll eventually hit 144 if the number is 0 mod 3. And that'll go back to 12. And we do know that 12 will eventually go back to 36. So hey, and that's going to go back to 6. So hey, that's that's interesting. So maybe we can try to prove this observation that, huh, if I do pick a number, let's say, between 81 and 144, that's squared, that's a multiple of 3, eventually when I square root it, the number is going to go 
somewhere in this range, below 36 or below the last square. And then I'm going to hit the next square. So for example, if I pick the number 141 and I reached 12 squared, the, n the number that I get as a result of 12, it's actually going to be less than 9 squared. And well, that is true. So maybe we can write this as an inequality. Perhaps we can. We it, it simply asks us to prove that if I have m squared and I go to m, well, when is that less than m minus 3 squared? The, the multiple of 3 squared before m squared. Well, I know that these both are increasing functions, so I guess I can just try out values of m. Well, m equals 2, that's certainly not right. m equals 3, that's again not right. If I keep trying, I can see that, oh, at m equals 6, uh, I, this does actually work. So for all m greater than or equal to 6, I have this inequality, which means that if I do pick an a0 congruent to 0 mod 3, that is bigger than or equal to 6, I'm eventually going to hit a square number. I'm going to, you know, keep going a0 plus 3, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to eventually hit some number k squared. And when I do square root it back, it's going to be less than m minus 3 squared. So the next square, so I get to k and then I go k plus 3, blah, blah, blah. The next square that I'll reach is actually m minus 3 squared. So I'll go back to m minus 3. And this implies that the sequence is going to keep on decreasing. So we do know that now that if a n is, uh, if a 0 is congruent to 0 mod 3, then I have a decreasing sequence. I can try to prove that even if I do reach a number, let's say c squared, let's just say some a k is c squared, I'm never going to exceed c squared ever again. Uh, let's just try to prove that. I know that this means that a k plus 1 equals c. Let's just assume that there is an a l greater than c squared then that must mean that al minus 1 must have been, well, either c squared itself or c squared minus 1 or c squared minus 2. Uh, we do know that a0 is congruent to 0 mod 3, so the modulus stays constant. c squared was, that means c squared was also congruent to 0 mod 3. That means c squared minus 1 is congruent to 2 mod 3, and this is congruent to 1 mod 3, so al minus 1 can only have been congruent to 0 mod 3, which means it must have been, say, c squared. So therefore, al must have been c, but hey, that's a contradiction again. So we have also proven that I can never exceed a number. So, And I have proven that it's, again, decreasing. So we can safely say that ak keeps on decreasing until, until there is no such last square. Or in other words, the cycle 3, 6, 9 which I guess more formally you can state as m, m plus 3 dot dot dot, m squared. So where there are no squares now between m and m squared, previously there were squares between that because, you know, m minus 3 squared was greater than m, but if that was the case, then it would keep decreasing. I'd go to a smaller m or a smaller number. So eventually we've proven that we're going to reach a cycle like this where m, m plus 3, m plus 6, dot, 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 m squared. There's no squares in between. And this is going to keep on cycling. So we have proven that case. And this actually works for all, all cases that are congruent to 0 mod 3. Or in other words, if I have a constant modulo 3, because I did over here, when I, when I showed that al minus 1 must be equal to c squared, all I used that was that the number the sequence must be constant modulo 3. So perhaps that gives us a hint to proving our initial observation as well, that if a0 was congruent to 1 mod 3, eventually, eventually, for some k, I'm going to have a k is congruent to 2 mod 3. Perhaps that's the case. Let's just try it out. Uh, if if a one is let's just for the sake of contradiction assume that a k is congruent to one mod three for all k, well that means by our lemma by what we just used to prove the zero mod three thing, this is gonna cycle. So 
we're going to reach a cycle like this, m, m plus 3, dot, 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 m squared, where there's no squares in between. But if I do consider m minus 2 squared, now I know m is congruent to, m is obviously, it's this is constant modulo 3, this sequence. So if a0 was 1 modulo 3, m is also 1 modulo 3. m minus 2, that's congruent to 2 modulo 3, right? So that's also m minus 2 squared, it's going to be congruent to 1 modulo 3, right? But m minus 2 is going to be congruent to 2 modulo 3. So keep that in mind. So what if m minus, so that means that this number is going to be a 1 modulo 3 number. And when I do do this, m plus 3, m plus 6, so on, I'm going to hit all the 1 modulo 3 numbers, right? Because, well, this is a constant modulo 3 sequence, and I'm adding by 3. So what if m minus 2 squared was bigger than m and less than m squared? Well, obviously it's less than m squared, but what if it was bigger than m? When does this inequality hold? I see that for m is bigger than 5, let's just say. Uh, for m equals 5, that's 3 squared. Yeah, yeah. So m is greater than or equal to 5. I see that this actually holds. And, huh, it's interesting to see that there's actually going to be a square m minus 2 squared, so I'll have to go back to m minus 2, which is, which is congruent to 2 mod 3. So I'll eventually reach a number that's congruent to 2 mod 3 for m greater than or equal to 5. And if we do try out, well, we have tried out the first 10 numbers, so there's no need to try out the numbers before 5. So we've proven that if a0 is congruent to 1, mod 3 then eventually for some k a k will be congruent to 2 mod 3 and from our lemma that no squares are 2 mod 3 this is going to be unbound unbounded and hence it's never going to repeat we've also proven that if a0 is congruent to 0 mod 3 then we'll obtain a cycle of the form m m plus 3 dot 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 up to m squared and well it's going to keep repeating because by our lemma there are no squares in between so there we go we've proven that a0 being congruent to 0 mod 3 is a necessary and sufficient case and that's the problem solved that was quite a long problem to be honest and honestly observation led us through it. This happens quite a lot in Olympiad problems. You try to observe something for a lot of numbers and try to prove lemmas that explain your observation. And this is universal in math, not just contest problems. So keep that in mind. Trying some cases and trying to explain what the cases actually mean. That marks the end of the video. If you did enjoy the video, leave a like and comment what you liked the most. If you did not enjoy the video, also leave a comment letting me know how I can improve. I'm always open to hearing your suggestion. Please don't forget to subscribe and also hit the bell notification so that you can get notified whenever I post. I also have an Instagram page where I post notes regarding theory in mathematics. If that is interesting to you, please do consider following that as well. My at is creative underscore math underscore